Hello friends, welcome to my new series, Yarns, Conversations with Cruisers. Um, this is a new podcast available in both video and audio format, where I just sit down with people I meet and hear their stories. Uh, I plan on doing this as I make my way around the world. None of these interviews are scheduled ahead of time. It's just people that I happen to meet, I find them interesting, and I ask them if they would like to sit down and um, tell me some of their sea stories. I hope you enjoy the video. You can also find the audio version wherever you get your podcast from. Um, and let me know down in the comments what you think. We were there and uh, we were anchored. You, you don't anchor there, you're on a mooring. Oh, okay. It's so deep. Because it's, it's so deep. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there at the nav station and Barbie yells. You know, I was she, reading a book. She was reading a book, and all of a sudden she hears somebody yelling. Mm -hmm. Help! And help! She thought it was on the. I was watching a video on the help. computer. Yeah. And there was somebody outside, and it was pitch black, no moon. Whoa. You couldn't see anything. Whoa. And I go out in the cockpit, and they're like, "Help me! Help me!" Don't let me drown. Don't let me drown. And I reach over, and I find an arm. Whoa. And I grab this arm, and I'm like, Barb, you got to get the dinghy in the water. Because, I mean, it was it was a girl I could tell, mm -hmm. but, and then she passed out. <gasps> and I couldn't tell if I was keeping her head, it was pitch yeah. black. I Whoa. couldn't tell if I was keeping her hand or her head above water. Yeah. And then... When I was a little lass, my mother up and told me, way, oh, way, we'll all way, Joe. Someday your love will call and take you out to sea. We way, oh, way, we'll all way, Joe. Hello, everyone. So this is another edition of Conversations with Cruisers. I'm here with Dennis and Barbara, and we're on landfall. Mm -hmm. and what is what is the boat? It's a Shannon 37. And what year was it made? It's a 1991. 91. And that, that's the amazing thing me and Barbara were talking about. It's stunningly beautiful, tons of woodwork, bronze elements around the boat, um, which is shocking to me for a 91. Yeah. I usually associate that sort of warmth and, like, attention to detail with older yeah. boats so shannon was pretty big on fairly traditional boat uh -huh. and traditional lines and a lot of bronze castings all the ports and mm -hmm. stuff are bronze castings mm -hmm. and then so and you started alone yep. you started cruising alone yep. from lake superior yep. right yep and I, what year did you leave i left in 2010. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. what when did you purchase landfall Probably around 2006. Okay, cool. So then I spent the next four years basically refitting, mm -hmm. putting heat in and, you know, all the new electronics and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff since then. Yeah. So. And then you sell her through Lake Superior. How do you get out into the Atlantic? You go um, out through Lake Superior mm -hmm. and then you go through a little bit of Michigan, Huron, mm -hmm. Ontario. Eerie. Do you have to drop the mast or are there? Nope. Oh, cool. Nope. A lot of locks. Mm -hmm. I think one night we did like 20 some locks. Oh, my hands cool. hurt just hearing that. <laughs> it's like locks are cute until you do enough of them and then you're like, this is not cute anymore. It's not fun anymore. Especially by three in the morning. It gets, yeah. it gets pretty old. It's, yeah. Yeah. But they want to, they tend to keep all the pleasure boats together mm -hmm. and then they just run a bunch of pleasure boats through at the same time mm -hmm. so that they can have a lock full basically yeah yeah it makes sense yeah yeah and then from there then you what is the next step and then you go out through the st lawrence seaway okay so okay. you go through montreal quebec mm -hmm. and then out into the um, st lawrence mm -hmm. there and then uh to newfoundland where i met barb and what year was that 2010 2010 yeah and then how did you guys meet <laughs> on the he, spot he has a different story because he'll tell people <laughs> she was walking the docks and i picked her up yeah you know, just yeah I'll never let the truth get in the way of a good story no but my sister bought his previous boat mm. 
So she knew of Dennis and knew that he was sailing around the world. So mm -hmm. he gave Dennis uh, my number and said, well, mm -hmm. if you get to Newfoundland, you need any parts, give my sister a call. Mm -hmm. So he got to Newfoundland. He threw the paper away, so I don't need that. When he got to Newfoundland, he needed parts. So he said, yeah, <laughs> I'll give her a call. So he called my sister and said, um, you know, how do I get a hold of her? I said, here's the number. So he called and I didn't answer. I didn't answer. Yeah, yeah. Because I was a single mom, had a stressful job. It's like, I don't have time for this. So. Yeah, some stranger so, showing up, yeah. like, needing help. Like, oh, yeah. It's just... Uh, and uh, so she called me up. She said, you're ridiculous. You're rude. So go, go make sure that you uh, give him a call. Yeah. So when he called, I said, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll help him out. Mm -hmm. So I got to his boat and... And he said, uh, I said, um, you got about an hour? Like, where do you want to go? Yep. <laughs> so I, so I took him I here, got there, 45 there. minutes, <laughs> where do you want to go? Yeah, speed dating. This is how. So, Cruising that, speed dating guys. Yeah, exactly. That hour turned into three and then turned into a week and a month. And that's fantastic. That's history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting how sometimes you just meet someone and you can literally, you're like, it's been six hours. Mm -hmm. And like... Not you're realized. a stranger but it's fantastic like yeah. just the conversation the company and you just that is a rare thing yeah know, right? i so, mean yeah. i don't think either one of us were looking for a relationship because yeah. he was sailing was around busy. the world oh, I and understand. i was busy and i was yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's not like yeah but yeah you know it just happens so yeah that's awesome so fantastic. yeah and then you continued cruising at that point yep. right so and i went to uh, I left and then I had to return because they wrapped a line around the prop mm -hmm. halfway across the Atlantic. So I was like 800 miles offshore and turned around and sailed back. Was it one of your lines or like a fishing line? No, it was or? one of mine. Mm -hmm. off the, I've done it. He did it on yeah. We've all done it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, and then, uh, so then I ended up spending the winter in Canada. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And then uh, the next spring I left again and sailed to the Azores. Mm -hmm. And then down to Cape Verde, and then across to Salvador, Brazil, mm -hmm. and then down the coast of Brazil, Argentina, until I got to, uh, let's see, Porto Madryn. Well, you got on in, in, in Argentina. Argentina mm -hmm. and I spent a month Buenos there. Buenos Aires. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Took, took a month's vacation because I was still working. Yeah. So I took a month's vacation. I said, oh, I want to see if I can live on a boat and yeah, like yeah. it mm -hmm. so went to argentina and i loved it yeah yeah so yeah. and so had you done any time on trips on the boat when he was in canada we, we did you, in newfoundland two we did weeks two weeks yeah two weeks yeah. In a beautiful but a little place. bit of like cruising and being in a small space together yeah. Yeah. the first time he took me on the boat i got really seasick and yeah. i was like oh i don't think i can handle this and <clears throat> when we got back uh he said you know the cruising is really or seasickness is really about being anxious. So mm -hmm. if you forget about that, yeah. then you'll be fine. So the second time he took me, I said, oh, God, he's, I, he's capable, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And I was fine. I wasn't seasick. Yeah. So I realized then it is a lot about how tight your body yeah. is and yeah. how anxious you are. And then you feel it coming. Mm -hmm. And so. even time on the water, because some people are very, I used to get very seasick. Yeah. Like, and just the more time you're on the water, then just you get, it just goes away. Yep, goes but away. It, it's that's the problem with seasickness, right? It's like a mental thing. Yep. Yep. You can't think your way out of it. No. no. But you can definitely like calm yourself in a way to yep. not aggravate it. Mm. Exactly. You have, so. to, you have to start off in a good state of mind mm -hmm. to be ready to go and yep. then it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, and then you got down to Argentina and you spent a month, you yeah. said? Yeah, mm -hmm. spent a month. And, and, and where in Argentina it. were you guys? We left from... Uh, Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. and then we sailed down to Puerto Madryn. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Mar del Plata. Yeah, that's where the right whales oh, have cool. their babies, and mm -hmm. it was fantastic. I mean, they they're on the bay, and they have their tails up for about ten minutes, and the babies just, you know, feed, and mm -hmm. mom is there, yep. and it's beautiful. You're in yeah. twenty five feet of water, and their tail, they must have their <laughs> nose right on the bottom. Yeah. Wow. And their tails. Because we saw postcards with the tails up. I said, wow, so I'd like to get a picture like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, must be, you know, like, boom, yeah, right, right at the moment. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, I said, this is so it's easy. Thing. You can drive around, get any angle you want. Right, exactly. <laughs> I just take pictures away. It was, that yeah. is fantastic. But it's the worst anchorage in the We measure every anchorage to that because yeah, that this was poor demand. Well, it yeah. was so bad. Mm -hmm. We had to sleep in the Bieber this oh, way. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. I've been. Because it's. It's 30 miles across the bay, mm -hmm. and there's no 
break wall. No, yeah. You're just on a beach, mm -hmm. basically. You totally open roadstead. <laughs> yep. Fetch builds up yep. and uh, six yeah. footers yeah. And swells and... contribute. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in anchorages in Southern California on islands. The swells really bad everywhere in Southern California, but so bad that I had to sleep on the cabin sole. So I only mm. rolled that far. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, sure. and it was the lowest spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty was... rough nights, but yeah. um. Yeah. So like, since you didn't really have a gauge of understanding maybe because it wasn't even your dream necessarily of cruising mm -hmm. what really stuck out to you that in that month where you were like what what experience aside from the whales where you're like this is awesome i think the simplicity <clears throat> of living on a boat because everything comes down to just simple life you really you know the space is limited mm -hmm. um connected to wi-fi is limited and mm -hmm. you just you just live in a, a simple life and then all of a sudden you start moving from place to place and seeing all these beautiful places and you say you know you could see so much of the world yep. and take your home with you and i was like i like this yeah it's good mm -hmm. and meeting so many great people hey? mm -hmm. everywhere we went there were so many great people and everyone had that one connection of living on a boat so right away you have something to talk about so it was, yeah yeah. Similar experiences. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is such a tight knit community. Mm. Yeah. Because look, we're all out there kind of like defying death daily. Yeah, um, pretty much. We also are all self sufficient in a way to where it it creates a community that's unlike anything I've ever experienced yeah. Yeah. in any other walk of life. The only bad thing about it is is the fact that you are constantly saying goodbye. Yeah, yeah. we had to mm -hmm. talk yep. about that. And he yep. said, but yeah. with cruisers, it's more see ya, because you see, really see don't a, know. See you in another anchorage sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's another. like, I met some cruisers, they're like, it's not goodbye, we'll see you later. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know something else that I found is, um, th it takes a certain personality, a certain type of person to be a cruiser, mm -hmm. because you, you know, yeah, you have to fix things yourself, you have to problem solve, you have mm -hmm. to, um, be able to be off the grid. You have to take risks. Um, so what we found is th it's it's a certain type of person yes. that will go out cruising. And a lot of the people that we found were self-employed people because mm -hmm. they're people that are willing to take that risk. Yep. You know, and just mm -hmm. go out there. So we had that. It's like yeah, it's like you know we have something in common, not mm -hmm. just boat and boating life, but a personality. One thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, I agree. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> because not just anyone no. can do no. this. No, you know, you or no. most people wouldn't want to be no. this. Like, no, it's a pretty challenging life. Yes, our and rewards are yeah. astronomical. But yes. it's not an easy life. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, not no, because people say living the dream is that you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> You're like most of us living the nightmare. Yeah, According, if you really knew, you would say you're living the nightmare with a little bit of the dream mixed in. If sometimes. you saw what we had to do <laughs> exactly. to get there, it's mm -hmm. not that yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But on the flip side of that, all of us would be like, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take all the hardships all mm -hmm. for the magic. Yep. Yeah, for it's, us, uh, for us, the only stopping point is age yeah physical mm -hmm. limits other than that we would do this mm -hmm. until you're 90 you know, yeah you can't and that's yeah. like one of the my closest friends i've made in the last year is a kiwi named keith and he's 72 but he gets around like better than anyone <clears throat> you know he's like very very young in spirit and and physically fit but he was we were in fiji having dinner one night and he was like he was like the cool thing he was like, for me to see you doing this so young, he was like, you can see everything twice. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, for right. me, you know, it's like I have limited amount of time that I'm gonna limited number of things I'm gonna get to see. Yeah. And he was uh, like, and you have kind of unlimited, you yep. know, yep. as long as you don't die at sea, it's like, you know, yep. technically. And, and the older you get, the more you realize how little time you have. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, okay, I can't really stay here for a year because yeah. I have these hundred other places I want right. to go to, so mm -hmm. then you move. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing is when you start out, you sort of have your list of places you want to see mm -hmm. and things you want to do. And you've done a lot of those places, but the list is longer than we It's longer. Yes. Not, <laughs> it never gets shorter. No, it gets longer. It, it gets never longer. gets shorter, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So. And so, so then when you left the boat in Argentina, and then Dennis, what did you, what was your route from there? From there, I had a friend of mine come down, and then we went from there to uh, around to uh, Ushuaia, mm -hmm. Argentina. And then from there, we could check out and go to Port of Williams. Mm -hmm. 
and we provisioned in Ushuaia because it's Port of Williams is just basically a village. Yeah. And then we went. Uh, we were planning on going to Antarctica. I'd done all the paperwork and everything, and we sailed down Cape Horn. You know, had some good blows on the way there, and then uh, we left, and we got about mm, a day out or so, and then. We took a big wave and punched one of the windows out of the Dodger. Oh, wow. So, and decided then that maybe we should turn around and... Yeah. And uh, so we did. And this, yeah, Southern Ocean takes no prisoners. No. And it takes a very, no. a very skilled captain to yeah. be like that close to like a bucket list check to be like, you know what, this is wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a hard decision to make. Obviously, yeah. the right decision because that ocean eats people and yep. doesn't yeah. even know that it no. eats people. Yeah. And there's no real weather forecast that no. No. helps you with yeah. that. There's no, it's, no. It's so Southern South America best. has no weather forecast yeah. to speak of because it's well, there's not enough. I mean, there's probably 50 private yachts that go around Cape Horn mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. So there's only 50 boats down there. Yeah. Well, they're not, they don't screw around with. You know, yeah. it's just no one lingers. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I get to the point when I get down there, I, I always say I'm gonna sneak around the horn. Like, yeah. they, like well, I don't. There ain't no shame to me sneaking around the horn. And like, I'm gonna get a look at it and then be like, okay, get you me back into safe part. Keep going. Yeah. yeah, that's what most people do. Yeah. The, um, mm. yeah. And it's interesting because it's what 600 miles between Cape Horn and Antarctica. Is like the shortest distance, yeah. but then you think about if you think about that in scale of the ocean sailing that you guys have done, yeah, it's, it's not very nothing. far. Like six hundred no. miles, I'm yep. like, oh, that's like, yep, that's yeah. like that's why it's yeah, that's so a nothing. Close. That's a week. That's it's, less than a week at yep. sea it's like in so the close. in in any other spot. Yep, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. But the lows there come through there. in about five days. Yeah, it's a so. conveyor belt of dangerous weather. So just yep. there's nothing stopping it. No, yeah. no. there's no breaks basically. Yeah. No. So then you went back to Port, uh, what is the name? Port of Williams. Port of Williams. That's basically where people hang out and kind of go around the horn, right? Where you yeah. wait out. I think that's yeah. where the parties went It's to. the uh, most southern yacht club in the world. Oh, cool, yeah. And it's a sunken ship. Oh, that's the one, yeah. yeah. So there's a sunken oh, 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 oh. ship and people tie up to it, right? Yeah, you raft friends. up You're to it five deep. Whoa. And that is probably, awesome. Oh, it's, it's awesome. That is I mean, so cool. The one boat has to move. doesn't matter what the, where the wind is blowing or what's happening. You all move and you're yeah. all in this. That is <laughs> chaos and really yep. neat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's like, and it's totally different from any other because everybody's wearing hiking boots because mm -hmm. it's too cold. Mm -hmm. And you got... If you're the inside boat, you got all Everyone. those people walking yeah, across yeah, yeah. with their hiking mm -hmm. boots, and it's, it's just, and if you, let's say, like, when you leave there, and your anchor would hook somebody's stanchion, mm -hmm. here's 50 bucks, mm -hmm. go get it, for, you know, no. and if you did that in, a, you know, yeah. other marinas. That's the it, insurance claim. Yeah, it would <laughs> yeah, be yeah. the big deal, you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah. no, these are work boats. That's it's a totally different They're, mentality. That they is, are a work boat. At that's moment. exactly it. Yeah. They're adventure boats. They're work boats. And stuff's going to happen. It's like, there ain't no one down there with like pristine white polos no. on and like no. dock shoes, no. like no. sipping martinis. It's no, like, no, that no, is no. not the jam. No, no. 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 It's so totally it's a totally different, different kind of place. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then so from there, we did were, you, were you able to repair the Dodger? there after that or did you wait yeah to... i was able to put it yeah. together enough yeah 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 and then we went up uh basically did spend the next six weeks going up the Eagle. the islands there of patagonia oh cool yeah so, did you did you sneak around the horn or did you oh yeah we yeah, were so well by when we went down and that's doubling the horn well tech, <laughs> it, you went the wrong way around the horn yeah <laughs> the <wrong laughs> against way. the currents and the winds right. yeah and how was that experience as far as like that How part was it? Was okay. Yeah, because well, I guess you, you just wait weather. for your weather. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just like anything. You can always pick the weather window and make it. Hope for the best. Still, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the skipper that I learned to sail under, she used to work on boats in Antarctica, and and she, she was like, I've done Cape Horn five times and never seen a storm. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, because we went at the right time. Right. You know. You so, have no schedule. You yeah. Just... But what a feeling that must have been mm -hmm. to like see the horn off your. Yep off your boat yep. that is off and, starboard and the charting down there is so poor yeah i mean their charts are ancient mm -hmm. and you know you can go and you'll see an island out there and you can see it 
but when you zoom in, the island goes away. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not on those it's smaller scary. scale charts. Oh, wow. Or that and, is, yeah. Yeah, it's really spooky. Mm -hmm. And they're off miles. Yeah. You know, wow. your offset is, you can't even set the offset. Right. Because it's just. Because it's just like, well, just eyeballs. It's old school. Yep. So eyeballs and don't get too close yep. to stuff. You count exactly. your yeah. points as you go along and you keep track of where you're at yeah. all the time. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the chart's probably, it's pretty close, but the scale's off. Yeah. So you It's have like to, an abstract reference. Yeah. You're like, there's something out there. Yeah. So there's, try you know, to identify There's that point and there's that point <laughs> and we're kind of like about here. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, it's an interesting. I mean, glaciers and mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's different than other places where there's rules. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, you know, you can if you wanted to, you can go take your boat right up to the glacier if you yeah. wanted. It'd be a dumb thing to there's do. No, there's no one there, right? So it's just like you. Yeah. And then you check in with the Chilean Navy, right? Oh, that's a whole. Yeah, cause that's because that's what I've read is you have to kind of stay in contact. Every contact time you, if you, like when we were in Puerto Madryn and we were going to go out and see the whales, they were on the radio. We figured we could just go out. Yeah, yeah. For a couple sail, hours come back. and come back. Oh, no, they were on the radio. Where are you going? You didn't wow. check out. You have to, at every port, you have mm -hmm. to check in and out. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to sail... 10 miles to the next port, you have to check out and check in at the next port. Now, do you think that is a means of like, because they've had to rescue so many people? No, because it's I'm, a work program. It's a work, oh. And each time you do it, it's like 10 people. Yeah. And you fill out all this paperwork and well-worn carbon paper and, yeah. and the next guy's job is to just make sure you fill all the copies are exactly uh, the same and the next guy's job is to put it in this ledger and the next guy's job is to do uh, it just because i i couldn't understand when i was reading about this i was like first of all there's no civilization down there no so it's not like someone's running drugs no. in the canals of chile no. <laughs> you it? know there's no. nothing to steal no and, but on a small it, yacht what yeah. it is is argentina and chile are at war oh yeah so you got the Beagle Channel there, and you got Argentina on one side and Chile on the other. Yeah. And when you were when you're down there and you're on the Chile, you're checked into Chile. You have to every ten miles they've got a post, mm -hmm. and you go the ten miles, and they ask you the you know how many people on board, you know what's your destination, da da da, and they constantly are monitoring that. Yeah. And the Argentinians take their PT boats and they drive right down the line to just skate over a little yeah, bit. Just, just to, to poke them in the eye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. and it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah. And then, so on the nature side of things in the Chilean canals, like, what was that like? Oh. It looks stunningly beautiful. Unbelievable. I'm yeah. telling you, I mean, a whale story. It was... Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, I never really, you know, they talk about the, uh, the whales feeding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How can a whale possibly live on a... But when you see it and it's just a solid mass, yeah. you know, and they can come through and just... I mean, and the penguins are everywhere and the seals, you see the... You know, you see, go to the... Where the seals are having their mm -hmm. pups and, mm -hmm. and they're right there and the vultures are right there in case mom gets a little too far away and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an easy meal and, I mean, it's... Pretty awesome. I mean, you see things that, I mean, like we've gone to, uh, like the IMAX and seen the whale movies and mm -hmm. stuff, and we're like, we've seen that, we've seen that, mm -hmm. we've seen that, we've you know? smelled that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've smelled that whale's breath. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. We've had yeah. that spray. On yeah, us. exactly. Yeah, but tell them their whale story. That yeah, you know, there's a. I thought we were going to hit a container, mm -hmm. big black thing in front of me, mm -hmm. and we're doing like six seven knots and just before we're gonna hit it goes wow. down and then it goes out and then it turns and it comes straight at the beam of the boat whoa and it's like, like moby dick style yeah <laughs> you, know, you pissed me off you woke me up <laughs> and it comes right to the boat and goes down under and comes up on the other side mm -hmm. then swims along the side and you could see its eye and yeah. So, yeah, the first time I made eye contact with a whale, it like shook me pretty good. I was yeah. just like, so same thing huge. with dolphins too, but it happens a lot with dolphins. But yeah. with whales, it's happened to me twice. 
And both times it was just like, yeah. Well, you know, one slap of the tail could mm -hmm. sink the boat yeah. if you wanted to. They are mm -hmm. much bigger than my boat. They're yeah. massive. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, pretty cool. And so, like, what drew you to go cruising? Was it th these sort of experiences? Was that your driving force? Um, I really like the open water mm -hmm. part. Like the ocean crossings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to do, when I did the part from Cape Verde to Brazil, you know, 28 days that was solo. Mm -hmm. And I just, there's almost no place in the world where you can go and be, not see a person. Yep. And be 100% alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never saw a ship. You know, there's hardly any planes down there. Yep. You never saw a plane. You, you know, there was nothing. It was just me in the ocean. Yep. And we're, you know, the waves just got huge swells. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was like 30 plus foot swells. Mm -hmm. And when <clears throat> they were coming from multiple directions, so when you came up and you're on like this point and your boat was on top, you could see like forever. Yeah. And then you'd go down and it's just. You're in a hole and there's water all the way around you and yep. it's just, it was the most awesome place for me. Yep. It was just, and I just love being out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like being a hundred miles from shore. Yeah, some people don't like passages and say mm -hmm. that's a reward, but he actually lights up. I right? love when, passages. Yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, I like both with crude, I've actually done far more ocean sailing solo. I've done only a handful of ocean sailing with right. crude. But that peace, mm -hmm. mm. yeah. like you said, yeah. there's no other way to replicate that. No. No. None. <laughs> None. There's no other place. And that's what I think is kind of the sad thing about a lot of the people now is they want Wi-Fi connection on their satellite phone. Satellite phone. And satellite, satellite, you know, they want constant. Yeah. And you're going to lose that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are, that isn't, the, yeah. the world is going to be. There is going to be no place to go then mm -hmm. where you can be 100% self-reliant. Yeah, I would never want full internet on my boat at sea. Even if I had it, I would shut it off on Ocean mm -hmm. Yeah. The Iridium Go, I have, there are like four people on the planet that have that number. Mm -hmm. That's my shore team. That's mm -hmm. your, and that's who I communicate with. That's your safety, with. but not your yes, exactly. connection mm -hmm. to and the world. It is yeah. not the same program that when I'm on land where no. I have to be connected. Yep. That is, you know, it's like... Me, the ocean, mm. and books. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like it's napping me. and book reading. Me, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And we me were speaking much. about this last night. You yeah. were saying this was the first time in, on your first. So yeah. your first crossing was to the Marquesas? I did. Um, so once he had done Chile or Argentina and the Horn, he went to Chile. And by that time, my son was out of high school into mm -hmm. university. So I sold my house, quit my job. Because at that point, I had been in Argentina and I knew I could live on the boat. Yeah. So I said, I'm fine with that. And people thought I was crazy. It's like, you had six years left for early retirement. And I said, I, I'm done. I can't wait six years exactly. of my life. I you could die in three. Exactly. So <laughs> no, I'm, I'm out of here. So I'm fine with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got on it in Chile and my first passage was 40 days yeah. to the Marquesas. Mm -hmm. And that's what I found. There was no, we're saying, no guilt. I could sit and read a book, sit there for five hours and there mm -hmm. was nothing to do especially like, a single is, mother right? yeah. like i had a single mother that raised us yep. and she never stopped no i never either she worked She's always she cl cleaned the yep. house because we were a nightmare she yep. made all the food you were a nightmare <laughs> well we you know we were all a nightmare you know it's like all children are a nightmare too, yeah. you know yeah um mm -hmm. so yeah. like to like it was i was just an experience i had never had before like mm -hmm. just total peace Mm -hmm. And all alone, because we took turns doing watches, so mm -hmm. I would be sitting out in the cockpit for the most part, because I liked the fresh air. Mm -hmm. And I would just sit there with my book and say, this is heaven. Is. And my journal, I started journaling. Exactly. And then starting getting my thoughts out on paper, and it was beautiful. It yeah. is. A, I keep, yep. almost always I keep a written journal along, along with yep. a digital journal. You know, even if it's like, I saw a certain bird, I'm like... Yeah, this the phosphorescence or, the, or yeah. the sun coming up and the feeling that that gave you, you know, your complete blackness, your... There's a real lonely feeling that you got to deal with when there's total blackness out there and you're mm -hmm. not sure what's going on. And then the sun starts coming up and it's like, oh, wow, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It's, yeah. And yeah. we were talking about this last night to where when you're, there's solo sailing, which is where you're alone. There's shorthanded sailing, which is usually a couple. 
And even when you're shorthanded sailing, most of the time, one you're solo sailing with yeah. another person asleep. Yeah. So that's something people may not think about. They're like, well, there's two of us, so we're all doing everything together. Yeah. Only said, when things go silly is yeah. when both of you are kind of working together. Otherwise, yeah. rest is very important yeah. yep. in ocean sailing. So you get it whenever you can get it. Yep. Yeah. Just bank it as yep. much as you can. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then, so your first landfall was the Marquesas. Marquesas. Pretty yeah. fantastic that landfall. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great spot. It's like, yeah. I always say that's one of my favorite places, but mm -hmm. I think it may have a lot to do with that being my first after I, 40 days. Yeah. It's like you don't get over that feeling mm -hmm. of seeing land. Yeah. You know? There's no better palate cleanser no. than 40 days of the beautiful blue sea, and then you see these like Jurassic the mountains and islands. It's not flat, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, mountains, mm -hmm. so it was beautiful. Yeah. And then how long did you guys spend there? So, about a um, month, probably. Uh -huh. Yeah. We usually spend a month to six weeks. At every minimum, year. month yeah. to six weeks. And then did you go to Motu or did you? Yeah. Have, yeah we, and where did you go to well. Motu? Uh, so oh. no, I don't remember any of the names. Yeah, I'd have to go tricky. back to so like Macam. I can't remember. Them. But we yeah. picked some of the isolated ones. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's one of these. Yeah, you can't do the normal route. He'd yeah, have yeah. to go. No, to I'm all interested the, in wild places. I all the isolated places. You know, when the coral heads are like. You're coming, you make it through the cut, and then, oh, there's coral head, there's, there's a coral head, there's coral head. Speaking of nothing being charted, <laughs> yeah, like, I came very close to hitting a coral head, because it's all uncharted in, in Rangiroa as well, and I was, like, cutting across perfect daylight, had my autopilot on, I'm watching, and again, they're just, like, on you. you yeah. Know? I saw a turtle. I was like, oh my gosh, a turtle, they're so rare there. And I was like, yeah. he's feeding. And I was like, he was eating some moss on top of a coral head. Oh I came gosh, within four so feet know. of yep. hitting that coral head. Yep. yep, you know, it's 100 feet deep, the yep. water is. Mm -hmm. And then these pillars come pillars. up. Pillars. And they're like six feet across at the top. Mm -hmm. And you see that, that yellow coloration? Yes. Like, oh! <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So then to Motu, and then you, did you go to Tahiti? Yeah, we yep. went to Tahiti. And yeah. our passage to Tahiti, we had, I think, one day when it was a full moon, and there was absolutely no wind. Mm -hmm. And the sea was mirror wow. calm. There was, like, Rare. no swell. Yeah, it was I had just one of the roughest flat. passages of my season was Is from right? Tikiha to Tahiti. It uh, was gnarly. Yeah. Oh, no, this was like, this I have is... never seen anything like it. Yeah. You, Mill I mean, pond, I they call it. Yeah. Down and see Oily myself. sea. Mm -hmm. Oily sea. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. That and the cool. phosphorescence, oh, mm -hmm. gosh, it was, was beautiful, yeah. So we made it to Tahiti. And then what was, uh, in the societies, what was your favorite islands? Um... I don't know. I we weren't that impressed that much with you know after doing the Marquesos and then two Motus and then the they were kind of like they're very a lot, French tourists. Yeah, like it's very and touristy. very touristy. Mm -hmm. And like we went to Bora Bora and it was kind of like well that was probably our least. Lagoon's favorite. a pretty color, but yeah, yeah it's past its prime. Yeah, you know, like I like Morea. That was nice. Morea yeah. was stunningly beautiful. Yeah. Cool. The yeah. smell of the flowers and mm -hmm. the flowers. The vanilla and, and orchids. Yeah. And yeah. But I mean, as far as... It just seems like a totally different kind of place. You know, yes. it's, it's very touristy, mm -hmm. you know, where we like the places where it's like you in a village, you know. Yep. And, and, you know, you have places like in Vanuatu where people come and they say, we've never had anybody come up here before, yeah, you know, and it's like... Coolest. Mm -hmm. that's kind of cool and all of a sudden it becomes a, a party for yep. the village and the guitar with three strings comes Whoa. out and you know they're dancing and you know they're just having a good time yeah yeah that's... i think that was one of the things that i really enjoyed as well is is um getting to understand and know the culture and mm -hmm. that's why i didn't like the touristy places because yep. then you're just another tourist and yep. if you go to a restaurant say well what's good here and they'll give you all what we think is american food yeah yeah, yeah yeah but that's yeah, not what french i want french fries and a hamburger yeah, because not, that's what you you mm -hmm. know what's good yeah french fries and hamburger it's not what i want yeah, yeah. so that's why we like going into the villages and then talking to people there and getting to know their culture mm -hmm. and we spend a lot of times that was like one of my favorite things about the Tumotu mm -hmm. where the snack restaurants were in people's houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's like a hand painted sign snack restaurant. Yeah. And then you're literally going into like some grandma's house and she's like yep. making you lunch. Yep. And that was like so far out of my comfort zone as like a Westerner. Yeah. 
that I'm like, this is so unusual that you have to just let yourself free to be like, I'm going to accept this experience. Yep. And then it becomes a beautiful, yep. you're yep. like, this is awesome. Yeah. So. Because one of the things that we started doing was going to the churches mm -hmm. yeah. and attending the services just mm -hmm. because that's where you see everyone all dressed up. And then you want to listen to the a cappella mm -hmm. choirs. And it was, yep. you know, um, really beautiful. And then you had to kind of blend in because you couldn't go in with your shorts and t-shirt. Yep. Mm -hmm. You had to make sure you were dressed properly and I had to say we went to this one place where was that and so I had I thought I had the proper dress I can't remember the island and I had like below the knees and covered my shoulder and this mm -hmm. lady looked at me she said no no you come with me I give you dress mm -hmm. with so your ankles or <laughs> so she brought me to this house and, and she wasn't she, a small one she wasn't a small one <laughs> oh nice nice yeah and so she she gave me this one dress and she looked at me she said no 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 you too fat I said well, what <laughs> okay maybe that's acceptable here like, oh all right I looked at her said okay so she said no so I'll get you the other dress so she I put that no 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 you too fat and so she came with the third dress and it was perfect and uh, so I, I was explaining it to to Dennis after fact it's like well like she was a lot bigger than I was <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. understand what was going on but she had the wrong English word what she wanted what she wanted to say is you too tall <laughs> You're too fat vertically. <laughs> That's what she was saying. She didn't understand. You're that. vertically was, obese. Oh yeah. Oh Cause my. The dress had oh to, my god. They cover my knees. That had to is, go there. But see, so that's what's like, cool is you didn't react and no, you just like went like, with it. It's yeah. like wow. You know, and you just is, log it as a hilarious like, experience. Well, to me, it was like it was refreshing. To me, I found like okay, being like someone said to you, you're too fat. You'd be, you know, it's like insulted. But mm -hmm. this was like okay, she's okay with that. I'm okay with that too. Yeah. She's so casual in that insult. <laughs> right. I'm gonna just go with this yeah. see where it goes if i'm too fat and she's okay with it. everyone's okay oh my with it. god fine. that is so, hilarious yeah yeah and it was all just to go to church I mean, that is mm, funny but yeah. also you probably get a different introduction to the community because yeah. what that does i would imagine is it kind of like diffuses any kind of idea that they might have about you being an outsider yep. yeah because then they're like oh then they're gonna greet you in a different way yep. yeah yeah and, and then um, that's how they brought you into their community then because after church they always had laid out the, the big the big spread you know you all sit on the floor and mm -hmm. and all the food is there and they would all say come join us come join us and mm -hmm. we sit there and have all their their food which mm -hmm. was all eaten with fingers and all spread out on the blanket mm -hmm. and all you know they grew with themselves they they Got it from the ocean themselves. There's nothing really that's been purchased. Yeah. 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 So. It's and then, do either one of you speak French? No. I. I She's my, really good at languages. So mm -hmm. I was born in uh, Lima, Peru. So I mm -hmm. spoke Spanish oh, before okay. I learned English. Okay. Um, and then my parents are Dutch, so I speak Dutch as well. Oh, okay. Uh, so, languages come pretty easy. So mm -hmm. if I listen to it a little bit, I start picking you things can, up. Yeah. And, and Spanish and French are, there's so many yeah, similarities. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could, you pick can work up your way. Cause people. I don't speak any French, but I had no problem in French Polynesia. I mean, most people no. in the smaller places they didn't, but I didn't find that to be yep. a conflict. No. No. You and can then, have a conversation mm -hmm. with, I sat on a beach and talked to a <laughs> guy and you know, we were sitting there having pompamoose, you mm -hmm. know, right off the tree. And it was like, <sighs> He didn't speak any English. I spoke no French, and it was kind of like we sat there and talked. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was kind of a really, it With was a really neat words. experience yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I think I've visited 25 countries or something like that mm -hmm. around the world, and I speak only English, and I barely speak English. So it was like, you know, it's like never been a problem for me. <laughs> like you can kind of sign language yeah, or yeah. work your way through it. Yeah. Or, <clears throat> Draw yeah. pictures. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. That's awesome. So, mm -hmm. so then you guys, after the societies and after French Polynesia, where did you go? We did uh, Rotonga, mm -hmm. then we went to well, Nui and uh, Beverage Reef, and then uh, Nui. Mm -hmm. we had a, How was Nui? Oh, Nui is. I wanted to go there, so they were closed. I couldn't go, but They're yeah, closed. they were oh, because of COVID. Mm -hmm, when I was coming oh. through, they may be open now, but okay. when I was sailing yeah. through, yeah. yeah, we were had really neat experiences. Well, I don't know, neat, but unusual experiences there because we were there and uh, we were anchored you, you don't anchor there you're on yeah, mooring oh, okay so deep because it's deep. so deep and all of a sudden I'm sitting there at the nav station and Barbie yells you know I was she, reading a book she was reading a book and all of a sudden she hears somebody yelling mm -hmm. help and, 
help. She thought it was on my, I was watching a video on the computer. Oh, yeah. And there was somebody outside and it was pitch black. No moon. Whoa. You couldn't see anything. Whoa. And I go out in the cockpit and they're like, help me, help me. Don't let me drown. Don't let me drown. And I reach over and I find an arm. Whoa. And I grab this arm and I'm like, Barb, you got to get the dinghy in the water. Because, I mean, it was it was a girl I could tell, mm -hmm. but, and then she passed out. <gasps> and I couldn't tell if I was keeping her head, it was pitch yeah. black. I Whoa. couldn't tell if I was keeping her hand or her head above water. Yeah. And then this other guy, so I'm standing there, you know, it's hot there. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my underwear and we're in a country that, you know, you don't show any... Right. <laughs> Similar to Fiji, where yeah. it's like very conservative. Yeah, very conservative. And so then this guy on this boat on the next morning is yelling... I was still trying to get the dinghy off, which because we all hang the dinghy mm -hmm, on the side. Mm -hmm. And I was like struggling because it was pitch black. I didn't yeah, have no a doubt. flash and I was like... Oh. When you're doing it so fast, you didn't grab a headlamp. No, it just yeah. went straight there. But and this guy had a dinghy in the water. But yeah, then you wonder, is she running from that dude? Yeah, we, we didn't know that what that's what I would be worried about. Yeah, but this was a couple, so we knew them oh, okay. and they were fine. That's but good, they had good. their dinghy in the yeah. water, and one of the reasons their dinghy was in the water was because it was deflating all the time. Oh. So they're like they didn't they couldn't hang it. It'd be like mm -hmm. so it was in the water, and he thought I was in the water, so oh, okay. he was yelling out, "Barb, Barb, are you okay?" I said, "Yeah, I'm fine. Come over, come over." Yeah. So yeah. so we could wow. drag her in the because the dinghy was deflated, we just sort of slid her in the boat, the and Barb's go. calling the police no. on the radio, mm -hmm. and, you know, we need an ambulance, we, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. and so then this guy's in his underwear, because he was doing <laughs> yeah, the no same doubt. thing, and, and then it's like, okay, so now we show up, and this place here is, the pier is just a big concrete block going out into the water, and you have a crane to lift your dinghy out because mm -hmm. you can't leave your dinghy oh, in the water because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. too rough. Uh -huh. But anyway, we get to the steps, and then him and I carry this girl up the steps. Yeah, two She's... dudes in underwear with an unconscious woman. <laughs> yeah. What could 15, go wrong? A fifteen-year-old girl. <laughs> it was fifteen-year-old girl. How do you explain this? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right? So then you get there, and the police come, you know, and they're. And, the ambulance never came, so then we put her in the back seat, and they're like, "Well, since you, you know, you should come with." <laughs> and I'm like, you. still in my underwear, and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I get in the police car, we go to the hospital, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm walking down the halls of the hospital, you know, and they're <laughs> wanting to know, you know, what happened. Yeah. And the police automatically assumed that there was one of the cruisers brought her out to their boat. Yeah. And then got, got her drunk. drunk. Yeah. And then, well, yeah. how else do you end up in yeah, the Yeah, because there was, you know, some single guys that were yeah. there and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and it was like, sure. okay, you know, which boat are you off? Which boats are there? Did she ever regain consciousness? Yes. Not while we were there. Not while we were wow. there, but, but no. she did. Yeah. And then they, uh, they, you know, asked me a bunch of questions and they said, well, we can tell she's a cutter because she has. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was she a local girl? Yep. Yep, local girl. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. then they, you know, we heard later that they brought her. She ended up going to Auckland. Yeah. To, uh, get so she treatment. was she was a troubled teen. She was like and a, she had, had mental illness that she was. She with. jumped in and yeah. she was going to commit suicide. Yeah, and then, and she then changed, changed her second, mind. Second ideas. Yeah. She's like, oh, and this is kind of a bummer. Yeah. So <laughs> like, maybe this whole, is not a good idea. Yeah. She maybe sobered up a little bit yeah. and said, because she was drunk, but. Uh -huh. Our boat, you know, you see it's pretty low. Mm -hmm. So I think she, if she swam around, our boat was probably the How only she, boat. I guess you saw the anchor light. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, well, we had dark lights on. Oh, I was up. Lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because he was watching the movie. Um, I don't think she would have been able to grab a hold of any other no. boat but ours. No. Yeah. You know, get her hand up and, and just hold I mean, down. Was... And the fact that she passed out so quickly. After yeah. Yelling, she she just, almost got her wish. She yep. just made it. Yeah. She yeah. just got there because... I mean, that's all she said to me, and then, but I mean, it's really s scary, because, I mean, a dead weight, trying to hold a dead yep. weight like that, For and she sure. wasn't small, mm -hmm. she wasn't like a skinny little kid, I yeah. mean, no, she's, uh, yeah. it wasn't, she was fully yeah. dressed, and yeah. all well, that and weight. it's also like, like the man overboard thing, mm -hmm. right, yeah, to where you're like, okay, and you're in a dead calm anchorage. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then you think about trying to do that for someone when you're yep. in a bucking sea. Yep. Yeah. I remember I've been in a man overboard situation and it was high winds and I was trying to throw 
things to the person, but they were yeah. upwind, upwind. And it just, no one ever talked about when you throw something, it blows Pat the wrong right. way. And I'm exactly. like, whoa, what are you supposed to, no one ever told me how to handle this situation. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, well, that is insane. Yeah. That is crazy. And then what, uh, a cat so run. then everybody in a little, you know, that's a, a one island country. Yeah. Very small island too. Yep. Right? And so everybody knows. Yeah. You mean by noon the next day, no doubt. you know, you're walking down the street and you're pointing at you, <laughs> saying, you know, it. that's the guy, the chief of police comes over and talks to you because, you know, mm -hmm. you can come here anytime you want. We, you know. That's awesome. Mm. And uh, then the catamaran. catamaran went, it broke, the, mo the mooring broke, mm -hmm. and there was a Swedish, <clears throat> weren't they sweet? Was... Norwegian. They were Norwegian. It was like five or six people that had bought the boat together and were going to sail across the South Pacific. Yeah. And the mooring and, broke uh, and it went up on the reef. That's, a, that's yeah. what I hate about moorings. Yeah. I can always, always trust my groundhog. Yeah. Yeah. Moorings are so scary, especially you when you know. have no choice. And yeah. you don't know it who's been on it. No. You, know, you don't know no. who's been on it before. I mean, they probably hooked the ship to that. Yep. Mm -hmm. It know, was a really... In a swell or something. Yeah. Or... yeah. It was a really windy day and we had had our dinghy out at that time. So Dennis ended up running back and forth and mm -hmm. helping them out and getting people yeah, off. Bringing we had, them lines we to ran, shore. brought people here in the cockpit and they were all thirsty and shocked and kind of so, scared. So. Yeah. But they're... And the catamaran. water's so deep you can't even dive on it. No. no. And even if you no. did, what are you going to do? You have to stand on mooring. Yeah. Right. There's only so, so many moorings. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, so after those two incidents, the chief of police was like, yeah, we know Dennis. Yeah. He's sitting at the restaurant, like, hi, Dennis. So awesome. like, we can yeah. welcome yeah. back anytime. But yeah, yeah that was uh, a... Right. And then and you guys go to Tonga? Yeah, we yep. did go to Tonga. We only went to the, the, the Middle Isle, uh, uh, Pai, mm -hmm. the Middle Islands, because um, at that time we were starting to run out of time. Exactly. That's what we were, I think we were talking about this last yep. night too, to where everybody's like, I would spend... Yeah. You're forever in those yeah. islands. Yeah. Like, you can't. You, you can't. Can. There's cyclone season. Also, you have limited stay because the country's like, you get to be here this long. Yep. But the, yeah. really, the weather. The it weather. is. You know, this is our homes. It, dri it drives. This yeah. is everything we own. This is our lives. And our lives are at risk if you right. hang out in the wrong ocean at the wrong time. So you don't get to just make up whatever you want to make up. No. You're, you're yeah. on a schedule. And, yeah. and I always say, you can't see it all. So you yeah. see you see what you can. So yeah. you guys cruise through Tonga. Yeah. And Pretty then, much. And then left and mm -hmm. went off to New Zealand. That was our first Oh, so you sailed here. And then how was that crossing? That was, was a great. pretty uneventful one. Really? Yeah. 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 What time, that, do you remember what time of year that? That would have been like in October, November. -ish. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was that where we stopped time? in Minerva? No, we didn't no. make it there. No. no. Yeah. But I think it might even been December mm -hmm. when we got here because we late. got here like late. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what year was that? Do you remember? That would have been, uh, 13. 13. Okay. And then did you, the next season, did you head back to, to Fiji or? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Fiji. Then we did Fiji for three or four years. Yeah. Fiji, man. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. could easily spend that much time in Fiji. Yeah. You know, Fiji, when I got to Fiji, I spent a month and a half in Fiji and it made me realize what you're saying about French Polynesia. Because when you get to French Polynesia, it's beautiful and you don't, you don't, I didn't notice the high contrast of like how it's mostly French tourists until I got to Fiji mm. and the multiculturalism in Fiji and the fact that it is villages mm -hmm. and yeah. everything Sabu Sabu mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're like and that for me Fiji was for sure my favorite mm -hmm. it was like, which islands did you go to there I did uh so I arrived at uh Sabu Sabu yeah. mm -hmm. and then I went to Makanai which was the former leopard yeah. colony yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. then I went to the Yasawa group uh, and oh, I did okay. the whole Yasawa group yeah, yeah. Because so, the okay. eastern islands, that's what we did the first year. Lao group. Yeah, the Lao. Mm -hmm. that's really the more remote because they mm -hmm. didn't allow cruisers in at all for thirty years. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, but it's pretty. It doesn't take them long to get used to cruisers and yeah, stuff like that. I so. mean, I found every, you know, in some of the towns it can be sketchy, but which I didn't mind. It's kind of nice to be like La Toka was pretty sketch, but. Mm -hmm. I, the Fijian people were so yeah. Yeah. nice. Yeah. I mean, everyone was nice, right? I didn't yeah. meet anyone rude in French Polynesia either. No. Like, no. I, 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 I had just amazing experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't recall any yeah. any place but, where yeah. I felt not welcome or yeah. were, didn't want to be. Sometimes a little too much of what do you have for us? What do you need? There's Sometimes. definitely that. Like, yeah. Here are my handywares. Yeah. Here are my yeah. handywares. And I'm yeah. like, okay. I, we were yeah. kept saying we're a small boat. Yeah. You know. You yeah. got a spare outboard you can give us. Uh, it was like, no. Fishing rod. 
Yeah. You know? yeah. So the second time around, it's like, well, what can we take with us that mm -hmm. that is light and we can give to the villages? And we, I've got it to oh, uh, for the kids, the the. Bubble. The bubbles, yeah, the soap and bubbles, mm -hmm. and they were so amazed with that. It's like, oh, I've yeah, never cool. seen anything. Yeah. It was so easy to to, yep. to give that. Yeah, but and yeah. we ended up probably our favorite part was uh, I should know the name of the island, but the island where Sa was at, or uh, yeah, we're terrible. Mm -hmm. Oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The north side of that island mm -hmm. is we never saw another boat. Yeah, yeah. that was, and yeah. that was inside. That's like a minefield of like reefs in there but yeah. yeah yeah i charted it out trying to figure out how i was going to go because i knew i ended up sailing through blywater mm -hmm. straight yep. to the top of yasawa yep. yeah yep. um but yeah it looks fantastic it's it's yeah. really it's nice beautiful yeah. and, and the people there are really friendly they've yeah. come to the boat uh yeah. every day just Bula! Yeah, <laughs> it's Bula! Like, oh, there they go they're coming they're so sing-songy too <laughs> Bula! every morning finally we said we're going to the reef just to get away from the bula no doubt, no and doubt. six in the morning we heard bula i said you've got to be kidding me what is this <laughs> that, that is was a funny. boat that needed to be had trouble engine trouble and they wanted just to borrow the tools so they tied oh, up cool. and and tried talk to about resourcefulness yeah, yeah. You know. right <laughs> yeah. so it was pretty funny no but i mean mm. the villagers there were really friendly mm -hmm. they always come with the fish yeah and then it's like paul oh, what do you want from us you want anything and they was like do you have any cookies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have Oreos. You can have those. I'll yeah. take your fish. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good trade. Yeah. yeah. So did yeah. you guys keep the boat in Fiji for those years? Or did no, you come we, down here? We came, we came back every year. So this is our fifth year, is it? Fifth time to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Fifth, fifth time to New Zealand. Because mm -hmm. Customs said we are elevated to, what is it? P3 P3 level. level. Because we have been here so often and there's mm -hmm. never been an issue. So basically biosecurity just, you know, yeah, quickly. Yeah, we know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was easy. Yeah, Lewis. It gets easier. Security, that's the one I know. He's a very funny guy. <laughs> was he? I don't know. The Asian guy? Yeah, the yeah, Asian guy. He's funny. funny. He is super mm -hmm. funny. He yeah. didn't like my shell very much. Oh, so yeah. he gave me the whole lecture. He about said. Returning it. I was like, so I'm, I have to return it I'm to pretty real. like on point about. I read all the rules, what couldn't come in. I yeah. got rid of everything in Fiji, gave yeah. it away or threw it away. Yeah. yeah. And he did my whole boat, and he was like, you're the first boat this season. We didn't take one thing off of your boat. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I like to like make things as smooth as possible on my <laughs> end. But, yeah. um. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> but I think, let's see what kind of, I don't know what kind of time we're in here. We're pretty good still. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we're good. 50 minutes, so we got a little bit. Right. Um. So then you guys went Fiji to... Then, the, then, you then we came here, and then we next time we went to Vanuatu, mm -hmm. which is even more remote, remote or mm -hmm. more less what westernized. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, the villages are smaller, and you know we had like some kids had adopted Barb, and they mm -hmm. were her queen, and they. <laughs> took her all over the place and, and we brought him in we brought him in there were it was a small village where where all their parents went off to work and mm -hmm. they was the oldest was 15 and they took care of the little ones yeah so they came with a little boat and there was a one dugout canoe. a dugout canoe Whoa. and it was one nice. person's job just to come just bail. To bail 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 <laughs> they were the build from yeah <laughs> they came right to the boat and uh so we invited him on, and then it was like, well, it's a little risky. Sometimes you can't be doing, you know, yeah. you, you could get yourself mm -hmm. in trouble. I said, oh, the hell with it. So they came in, and so we had the TV. We put on the movies for them. We gave them, they had never had Coca-Cola before. Oh, so here like, we go. Taste yeah, here. heroin. So we have a, we have a, <laughs> oh, no. we have a, <laughs> we have a, 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 a soda stream. A soda stream. Oh, yeah, there you so, go. Bubbly so, water. Yeah. They're like right. living that wild well, dream. The thing they were really intrigued with was. Water maker. Water make because oh, yeah. they were like, You never drink salt water. And I said, Well, you're drinking this is salt water, yeah. And we just they, their minds exploded, yeah. They it's were like, like, I don't want to taste that. So go ahead, it's water, yeah. it's, it's from the ocean, no. Yeah. But amazing. yeah, they spent a couple hours on the boat, it was really nice. So, Vanuatu, we loved. We got a chance to climb up the volcano and mm -hmm. and look down at the at the what do you call it, the lava. It was beautiful. We had done a tour that we thought was a, a, a legitimate, a legitimate one. tour, and mm -hmm. it turned out to be an 
illegal under the cover tour because when we got to the top the guy was like the real tour guides were there and he was like everyone hide don't so we no had one to be hide, seen. lay on the ground <laughs> it's like what kind of play what kind of tour is this That's that you're like, taking us <laughs> so hilarious it's like a like a comedy oh, movie what? like if you it saw was. that in a comedy you'd be like that would never happen it was, oh, we're looking yeah. at it what's was. going on he said yeah that's the He's real like, tour guide you need to hide throws you, you in a bush you're like, <laughs> yeah. and then he was taking us to oh, part my. of the volcano that you weren't supposed to yeah. go to and well you're like, like well if we're already breaking yeah. the law let's <laughs> fucking go in oh, and then it exploded and it was ash and smoke yes. i couldn't see i could hardly oh, walk yeah, out and the tour guide took my hand and said come come with me and i was like what i'm not a virgin i got kids like I'm not Notice, the sacrifice. Uh, he knew that I was going to walk into the yeah. <laughs> into the mountain or out, but yeah, yeah it was really funny. We had some fantastic pictures because I think if we had taken the legal tour, yeah. we would have been like behind out the fence. Before and, dark. And, and we out were there dark. after dark. Yeah. How so, was that hike back down? I was scared. Oh, it was. <laughs> I bet. Because oh, he didn't want scared. you to use headlights. No, no, no doubt. Headlines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so you're going down this steep of gravel in the dark. Mm -hmm. I don't know how and for me, like, felt. this is cruising. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. These we sort were... of experiences that you don't, people that go on a cruise ship, which yep, is like, they don't there's nothing it. wrong with that. If that's what you can do, or if that's what you're comfortable doing, yeah, like, no, that's it's... awesome. You know, however it is, you can see the world. But to arrive on your own boat to places yeah. where no one goes, mm. to find yourself on an illegal tour where you're like sneaking down a mountain at night, like, yes, that's the sort of richness crazy. of life. If it all goes okay, that's awesome. <laughs> That's <laughs> as long as it all goes okay. Because even if we're at the bottom of the mountain, he's like, do not turn on your flashlights. We're going to get picked up here. And it's like, well, oh what happens gosh, if you I, don't? I love <laughs> it. Like, yeah. So we're all, we're all hiding. There's a car coming. And we're all, he had us all hide in the bushes. Nice. And then, but Fantastic. it was the guy that was going to pick us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we got in this thing and it was like the roughest four-wheel drive trail we were in the back of a like truck zero and shocks. it was like this mm -hmm. and it was like i'm not gonna even survive this we yeah. were being tossed I around so much but oh. we made it because we left at two in the afternoon and we didn't get back till three in the morning wow yeah it was wow but that was a beautiful island mm -hmm. yep <clears throat> and then so culturally is it closer to like fiji i was shocked at how different because i was like once oh, yeah. you get to Fiji, you're like, this is not Polynesia. No, no. no. It is, it's and I, totally I was kind of shocked because they're not that far. No, you know. And then you're like, wow, this is definitely not Polynesia. No. Yeah. So is is Vanuatu similar? It feels like, like Fiji felt more like Solomon Islanders or something, or Papua yeah, New Guinea, yeah. that kind of influence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's it's more like that because it's only what 200 miles from Fiji. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. 300 maybe. So it's not very far. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's similar, mm -hmm. but much more remote. And Fiji has a lot more Indian influence. Oh yes, mm -hmm. and less Indian influence there. Still, I think forty percent. But mm -hmm. it's they're all in the in the towns. Yes. they're not mm -hmm. in the villages at all. Um, yeah, I think it's more remote. And yeah, I. I I kind of had this feeling we were less expectant of getting things from oh, yeah. you. They didn't, yeah. You didn't get that, oh, you're here, what do you have for, mm -hmm. you know, what 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 can you give us or what can we trade? It was right. more of, you're here, welcome kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, because yeah. there's so few visitors. Yeah, yeah not they're many not, people there. Yeah. They're not, yeah. they're just, they're just glad to see you there. Yeah, and, and they're just interested, like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah, is, that is very different. They're, yeah. they're really interested in you and what you're you know what your life is like mm -hmm. yeah because I mean, you're from a totally different planet as far yeah. as they're concerned you know it's and like... you know it was interesting for me traveling through polynesia was being heavily tattooed i didn't stick out no not no. like police officers are fully yeah. tattooed yes. yeah. to whereas the first time in my life i've been somewhere where socially i was actually blended more with the society yeah. That was a fascinating thing yeah mm -hmm. you know one of the things in the marquesa look, that was the first restaurant we went to remember and um, the guy serving us was well, dressed as a girl, which is not mine. But mm -hmm. we found out that they have they have the third sex there yep. long mm -hmm. before yep. it was ever talked about anywhere, you know, in yeah, North America. Yeah, it's just accepted. It was there. accepted. There was nothing wrong with. In in yeah. Polynesia, the third child is raised female, whether oh, it's male or that. or male oh. or female. 
because they run into a situation to where if it's all boys, they don't have anyone to do what's considered the feminine work around the house. Oh. The dishes, the sewing, the helping raise the children. Have so the third jobs. child is raised female. No, no matter, matter what. what. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a third sex that exists where yep. it, it's taboo in Western society. Now it's becoming less taboo. Less because, taboo. But yep. it was an interesting, and I sat down with a number of, of Polynesians throughout French Polynesia and and like they explained the whole system to me and it was fascinating. Okay, so you're not realizing So that. that's why cuz I couldn't figure out when I was in no. the Tumotu, I was like how are there so many transgender people in a small mm -hmm. atoll? Yeah. yeah. And that was and the And that's why. Okay. Yeah, and I found out was, later, I found out I can't remember where I was when I found out, but I was like that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah, cuz yeah. it, it was so refreshing same way as oh you're fat, same thing. It's mm -hmm. like it's so refreshing to be who you want to be and no one has any judgment of that right no. it, was it was great very different than yeah. western culture it yeah. was like there was no hatred there was no, no it was just they no. were they were they were treated as people as yeah. people exactly. how novel right. what mm -hmm. a novel concept long, i mean yeah. that was back in 2013. yeah exactly so. and it's long been that way and I, yeah. i've heard this there's a similar system in some of the islands in the caribbean the sand bass boss islands or something oh, like that yeah, i think yeah. there's indian yeah. cultures or native people's cultures that do the same practice but so yeah. so okay so you guys went vanuatu then did you do new cal uh, yep. so we went back to new zealand and then new nope. zealand no nope. no vanuatu new cal vanuatu new cal australia mm -hmm. oh then australia yeah and then where did you land in australia uh brisbane brisbane, brisbane. okay and then yeah. you worked your way down yep then yep. circumnavigated Tasmania. Tasmania. Oh, wow. Yes, How so was that? I want to go to Tasmania. Tasmania. How was so that? So you Tasmania. need to go to Port Davey and spend a month there. Awesome. Yep. That's, spend that's spend the, a month That's there. the knowledge. Spend. That's the advice I want to yeah. hear. Is like, yeah. Hobart is... Oh, so I'm from Newfoundland, as far east as you can go, St. Mm -hmm. John's, and, the, and the, the town or the city is built on a hill and it's all colorful houses. Mm -hmm. So when you got to Hobart, it was the same thing. The town mm -hmm. is built on the hill and it's all colorful. Whoa. It's like, oh, this is like Newfoundland. On like the opposite sides of the yeah. planet. Right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, that is really neat. And the people are so incredibly nice, yep. aren't they? Very Hobart. friendly. It's just That's unbelievable. Cool. I mean, you can go to, yeah. you know, we went to movie night at some yeah. community center and mm -hmm. it was like we uh, still talk to those people too. yeah we're still friends with yeah. them they're uh they had just finished going to newfoundland so when oh, she heard neat. i was from there it's like oh you need to come to my house and and she was trying to give me her newfie screech i said no we don't drink that stuff that's for <laughs> yeah. tourists mm -hmm. that's just like and uh and she was telling us all the stories about her trip to newfoundland so mm -hmm. there was a connection that there anyway fantastic mm -hmm. but yeah. uh yeah the people are there yes, you'll nice. love it I can't yeah. and and that's sailing Tasmania, it's like what you say in Hawaii, you don't mm -hmm. know, the wind can just pick up like that. Yeah. You yeah. see the ripple and you say, get ready, reef, mm -hmm. and then boom, yeah, the, it blows And the up. Bass Strait is deadly serious. Yeah, now we did that <laughs> It's one a small little strait, but yeah. it is deadly, deadly serious. serious. Mm -hmm. But the south coast is really, you're out there, you're in the southern ocean mm -hmm. at that yeah. point. Yeah, it's it's ocean sailing anytime yeah, it you is. pull the hook up. It's not yeah. like coming across the South Pacific. No. You're, totally that's how Hawaii is too. It's literally, yeah. you get a mile offshore and you're ocean sailing. Yeah. And that was yeah. the most shocking thing about sailing Hawaiian Islands. I was like, wow, this is literally ocean sailing right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, you, you have yeah, to be ready. no coastal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and then you did Tasmania and then you guys ended up leaving the boat in Melbourne, right? Yep. Yeah, just we, by Melbourne. We yeah. bought a car and we were going to do a year of land cruising. We were yeah. going to go up to do the Outback stuff. The Outback mm -hmm. and went home and then COVID hit. So. Yeah. So and we got stuck. Boat and car sat there for four years and. Three, yeah, three and a half years. Yeah, and then where was home? Like, where did you go back to? Did you keep, a, like, a, how did you have a land base? Because you have family, obviously, your children. Yeah, so we never really owned a house. I was mm -hmm. Canadian, he's American, and mm -hmm. it's like I stayed Canadian and could only go to the U.S. for six months, but I visited family. So once we got to North America, I went to my family, he went to his, okay. and we lived apart for three mm -hmm. months and, and just couch surfed and saw yeah. all the family and then back to the boat. So this time we were in the U.S. and South Dakota where... Mm -hmm. That's where has family. your family's there. Yeah. Do you have children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we um, we ended up there, and then they closed the borders to Canada as well. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't go back to my family. So mm -hmm. we spent our COVID years in South Dakota and mm -hmm. decided to build a home because yeah. what else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like I always said to people, it's like, 
I didn't want to put pause on our life just because COVID hit. Because mm -hmm. as you get older, pause three years is a three years a lot. Long. That's a, a big lot. percentage at the end in your golden right? years. That's a massive. Yeah. Loss. So we said, well, we're here. Let's build a home we're going to go to when we're done sailing. Yeah. So yeah. we started that process. That's cool. Yeah. And it's not done. It's not done. No, it's like a boat. Yeah, it's never done. Yeah. I said, "Well, when are we? When are we going to be moving into our house?" He said, "Well, at our rate, if we want to keep sailing, four years before the house will before be done." Before this, mm -hmm. it's done. So we'll go home summer. Yeah, and then work come on back it for a I think that's a fantastic way if people can work it out. And even with young people, I encourage young people to where they're like, "Wow, it's not possible to do this and this and this." I'm like, "There's lots of people that." They sail during the season, and then they put their boat somewhere cheap yep. on the hard yep. or somewhere, That's and then they do. go back and work and live for six months. Yep. And, and I used back. to, even in the 90s, I had a good friend who would work as a taxi driver 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day for six months, mm -hmm. and then he would take six months off and go travel the world. Yeah. Yep. And then he would run out of money, yep. He'd and have no, he would buy a ticket so he could... Eventually, when he ran out, he would fly back yep. and he would work as a taxi driver. Yeah, well, and like you know, yep. if you're gonna do the the Fiji Vanuatu Tonga thing and you come back here to get out of cyclone season, mm -hmm. I mean you're basically laid up for five six well, months. Well, there's beautiful yeah. cruising. You yeah, know, but yeah. You can, but yeah. I mean, you're but, not gonna do it six years in a row. No, no doubt. Well, and also it's like such Kiwis are so nice. Yeah. The infrastructure's here for yachting. Yep. You can <clears throat> know that you can safely leave your boat yep. here. Yep. And then go about go back home. Go back yeah. home. You know, see yeah. family. Yeah. 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 Well, and you then, actually met someone from from Melbourne that has his boat here because cruising here is much better better mm -hmm. than it was I, where we were. In Melbourne. Melbourne I've a, met a lot of Aussies that keep their boats here. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 it's there's no place to really sail there. No, you're you just on the coast, and there's no islands to go. Right. Mm -hmm. to or no you know and be able to reliably get back yeah and australia's so big yeah it's big yeah. like you can't just hop up to the great no. barrier reef to wit sundays or anything no. and then cruise back it's, it's like a, that's like a size big of thing. the u.s almost mm -hmm. so it's big yeah. it's huge yeah so mm -hmm. and then so now you're back in new zealand you're mm -hmm. gonna you guys said you're gonna be here till october yeah roughly. we'll fly home for a few months mm -hmm. and then we'll be back and then we'll put the boat back in the water and then uh, we're going to sail back to Patagonia. And then that'll be, you'll be in the roaring forties, probably that whole <laughs> 7,000 miles, 7,000 miles, <laughs> um, 70 days. So that is fantastic. Have we have to, a water maker. It's, uh, yeah. it's easy to provision enough food for two people. It's not yeah, a challenge. It's not, we, we've, I mean, when we went 40 days to the Marquesas, we still had tomatoes left. Yeah, yeah but fresh we tomatoes. That is we amazing. had a box where we had green tomatoes on the bottom, and it went up to red, and then we just mm -hmm. ate our way down. That is cool. Right. Yeah. And then the eggs, I mean, here, they don't refrigerate That's them. That's the so best you can, thing right? yeah. ever. Yeah. Once I got out of the U.S. zone where the fridge is, the, the eggs aren't refrigerated. Exactly. I'm like, Thank you, heavens. You could have your trays, mm -hmm. and it would last as long as you pack it right. You could yep. have it for 40 days. We're going to have 70 days of eggs. <laughs> yeah. So. Eggs end up in my stomach more than in under 40 days. But yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the big problem with eggs surviving on my boat. So you guys are going back to Chile and yeah. just spend some time. In yeah, we'll else. spend probably three, four months doing Patagonia because mm -hmm. just, it's just channel after channel. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your ground tackle set up? We have uh, 200 feet of chain and then 150 feet of road with a 85-pound CQR. Mm -hmm. So it's twice as heavy as, over twice as heavy as it's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I, I have, I have a 45-pound Mantis and 300 feet of chain, but I set it up for the Aleutians or mm -hmm. the Canals of Chile. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, before I left LA, I was like, you know, I want ground tackle for the wildest places I'm going. <clears throat> and I want a storm anchor. Yeah. Period. Like, yeah. Well, the thing about Chile is it's all shorelining. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you pull into a place and the anchor is just a small part of your ground tackle. Yeah. And we actually have line spools that go on the stern. Mm -hmm. Do you use polypropylene or? Yeah, it's polypropylene, uh, like five A's for this boat. Oh, five A's, okay. And then we, have a hundred meters mm -hmm. on each spool. Yeah, that's what I was told to get for Fjordland as well. Yeah. At least one spool of a hundred meters. Yeah, because yeah. we did Fjordland. <clears throat> that was my first time running a dinghy and having to tie up the shore, mm -hmm. and we didn't have 
the spools and yeah. then I said it would be a lot easier because mm -hmm. the lines that get tangled up yeah. and yeah. I was trying to trying to run the dinghy and at the same time untangle the mm -hmm. lines and at the same time trying to angle yeah. you know, and I'm going to be doing out. everything alone so yes. that's oh, so. I definitely will have to set up the quickest yep. Yep. deployment yep. and retrieval yep. Yep. as possible yep. Yep. And then when you shore tie on rocks or trees, what is your connection point? Do you have cable or do you just tie the, the line? Um, if you, we either do like a strap, <clears throat> like a cinch strap like they'd use in construction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a web strap mm -hmm. and put it around the tree or, and then shackle to that. Perfect, yeah. Or we try not to go right to rocks because that cuts your lines up. Yeah, so it'll chafe right through, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, I did that in one place and we were tied, we were in a little tiny cut. It was probably only 40 feet wide mm -hmm. and it was really deep and we were probably four feet from the shore on the one side mm -hmm. and the willy was hit and it laid the boat over probably 60 degrees. <laughs> and it you came, find out if you're tied up right. <laughs> well, and it came from, it was 400 feet tall on the other wow. side, straight up and actually hung over the boat. So the wind came over that, Whoa. down, and laid us over. Like an eddy of like, and what do you think the, the speed was? 60 knots? or? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So think about that, an eddy of 60 or plus knots. Yeah, so it is. came roaring down yeah. there and just bam, yeah. laid us over just like nothing. And now what is the time, like how long did the Willowaz last? Well that one there only lasted maybe five minutes yeah exactly and it's just but it's enough through. to put your butt on a short, oh yeah you yeah. know it, and it it broke one of the lines we had we wow. had across to a rock and it just broke the top of the rock right off and wow and so yeah. i mean trees are meant to flex so that yeah seems like, there's yeah. a lot more give yeah. to a tree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's uh, but it's that's just the way you do it you always mm -hmm. are like spider ribbon out yeah. yeah the only time i've done shore ties i was with on a buddy's boat and we were cruising the Orland Islands of Finland, mm -hmm. and we we came bows bows to you can go right up to the rock, yep. and all the all the um, bows in Scandinavia are open, so you can step off oh, on it. You know, yeah. all the all the marinas are like that too. When you pull into a marina, yep. you go bows to, so you clip your webbing spool mm -hmm. aft on your mooring aft mooring, and you mm -hmm. come in and you step off and you tie it. So mm -hmm. same thing with bows to and the rocks. So it's like a med tie only. Bow yeah, in. exactly. So well, we did that, and then you tie off to a bunch of trees, yeah. and then you have a stern anchor that you row out to keep you from you know bouncing into the yep. into the rocks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and every one's a little different, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, yeah, but but you found a hundred meters to be yeah a good length. We had four of them, mm -hmm. four hundred meter lines. So mm -hmm. I mean, on a boat this size, just storing all that extra line. Like that we, is the biggest challenge. Yeah. I mean, where do you put all this yeah. stuff? I mean, they, I don't know where it's I'll, easier yeah. to, you know, read it in a book and you mean, exactly. Exactly. Like, where do you put all this mm -hmm. stuff that you're mm -hmm. supposed to have? You know, yeah. It's like the line spools were really, really nice. Yeah. You know, and I'm for sure going to have at least one. I would for sure. Yeah. Especially if you're solo because mm -hmm. if. I mean, and I'll just buy those like rail clamps and get a little piece of stainless, and that's it. Like, put mm -hmm. this bowl, and then we're happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen people use something as simple as, uh, you know, if you go to the marine store and they have chain on those spools oh, or yeah, electrical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go to an electrical place, they get this plastic spools with the wire comes on mm -hmm. sometimes, and I've seen people use that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's just so much easier than. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's always a knot. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And like Barb, we were down in we? Fjordland, weren't we? Mm -hmm. And Barb goes to shore with the, the shoreline mm -hmm. and going to tie it to this tree. And all of a sudden, the bushes are moving. I thought, all I thought was it's a rat. Yeah. So I want to come face to face with this rat. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be one of those, I don't know what kind of penguins, you know, the, the oh, penguin yeah, with yeah. the mm -hmm. beautiful the crested eyes. And, yeah. like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, and he's and like, they're like <laughs> looking at each other. Bear. No. There's no bears here. At no, least. no, we're both like staring at each other that for a minute. It was so cool. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. So like it was it a challenge, I guess probably at first, where to make sure you get your boat close enough that you can get a hundred meters. That yeah. must have been the trick. I yeah. use a range finder in anchorages, but that yeah. must have been a tricky thing to like figure out. You probably have to reset a couple times. I guess you could just pay out yeah. your You just look pull out more anchors. Yeah, yeah. And most of the time you 
when I was in Patagonia, it was deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were putting your anchor down in 50 feet. Yeah. You know, you were backing up, you know, not that. And probably no holding, not, not no, much holding either. It's no, like rock, no, like glacier rock. cut rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, you have to tie back. I know one boat that they, because the tides are pretty big, you know, 27 mm -hmm. feet mm -hmm. isn't uncommon. That is bonkers. Like, and how do you even figure out the scope on 27 feet? <laughs> yeah, well, that's just perfect. <laughs> like, that is you know, so and, crazy. And they actually swung and they the coletta that they were in when the water went out it just pulled them right out and they woke up four miles down the, they just drifted with the current wow and they woke up and they were four miles they had drifted down the coletta yeah because you go a long ways back i mean it'll from when you quit sailing basically and it's a narrow like a river but mm -hmm. it's really deep and you'll go back 10 miles so you got an hour and a half to two hours of motoring every day to get back right and, and so fuel is always a problem yeah no know? doubt yeah because you're spending so much because you don't go anywhere at night mm -hmm. for sure and yeah it's yeah it's an interesting place but then the payoff is the yeah Solitude, solitude with solitude. remarkable views yeah. Yeah, and the wildlife the wildlife that's what i always say like mm -hmm. i'm only out cruising because i want to see beautiful places wildlife and collect memories yeah. like yes. that's my whole yeah. mission yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 it's and down there the birds there's just so many birds there mm -hmm. i mean the condors and the mm -hmm. petrels and i mean it's just tons of birds uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the condors soaring overhead are just spectacular. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just incredible. Awesome. Mm -hmm. so. On that note, we'll go ahead and close up the conversation. And then if we can, could you, we, we walk around the boat and do a sure. little sure. quick tour? So, Pretty um, Yeah, so we'll, we'll take a look at landfall now. Thank you guys so much Thanks. for Thank having you. a conversation. Mm -hmm. really appreciate yeah, it. I know that the viewers are going to love hearing the stories. <laughs> and, um, yeah, let's take a look at the boat. To keep the video from being too long, I've broken the tour video up into its own separate standalone episode, so make sure you check that out now. For their passage across the Tasman, Dennis and Barbara were joined by Barbara's daughter, Allison, and her partner, James, who also have a YouTube channel. They made an incredibly beautiful film of the passage, so head over and check it out on their channel, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of their adventures. I want to give a big thanks to my guests for joining me for this episode of Yarns, Conversation with Cruisers. The intro and outro songs are sung by Sarah Satya, with lyrics to the old tune rewritten by myself, James Frederick. You can find any relevant links for the guests in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. When I was a little lass, my mother up and told me, Way, all the way, we'll call away, Joe. Someday your love will call and take you out to sea. Way, all the way, we'll call away, Joe. The storms will rise and the waves shall fall, in new lands you shall see. Way, all the way, we'll call away, Joe. The richest boy will be the stories that you bring me. Way, all the way, we'll call away. Way, hold away.